Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. We're going to wrap up today with a special selection, which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is I need to check out. Today's comes at us from Rudy. Lean Adib is a Syrian singer, composer, musician who works with both Arab and Western forms. This song is solely for vocals and accordion. She adds this note to the YouTube video for it. Da is a song about the constant search for light, enlightenment through hardships, but also rebirth. It was written in 2018 and recorded in Paris between 2019 and 2023. So that's what we're going to check out today. And we'll see what Lena Deeb is bringing to the table today. That was a spicy note. I love the dynamics of this. Very haunting. warmth to the voice, it complements the accordion well. The accordion's harmonies are so interesting. Like that straight up jazz. Interesting use of space there. This part, the verse, has almost feelings of uh, older musical theater to it, bringing in a little bit more of a Western classical vibe.
song's almost over playing around with rhythmic syncopation Very interesting. I think what what stands out to me the most is the the number of influences in this. There's certainly a um, and I wish I was more knowledgeable about this, so I'm just going to throw a giant umbrella term. <laughs> On this, there is a general Middle Eastern flair to this. A little bit of uh, some Phrygian dominant in places, which can give it that feeling. But also, it's in the way that the rhythms work. We have a lot of these quick flourishes. Well, they'll they'll hit a note, jump up to a couple above it, come back down with a specific use of enunciation to this or uh, attack when we're talking about the accordion where some of those notes get slurred and others get more of a, a harsh stop with the vocals being more of a, a a glottal stop i think is what you would call it just a very hard end to the note um but it's quick it moves quickly between these more legato and staccato styles of uh of articulation and um I don't really hear this too much outside of uh, Eastern music, which is, uh, I mean, that informs a lot of this. The, the melodic phrasing, I think, is very much rooted within this one specific region. But harmonically, this song is, is all over the place. And this is what really stands out to me. Uh, like I said, we have a little bit of that Phrygian dominant stuff show up from time to time, so it really gives it that Middle Eastern flair. But there's also jazzy moments in here, particularly during the accordion sections. Some of those runs end up feeling very uh, freeform, very spicy. Other moments seem to draw in from classical music, particularly the Renaissance era, from what I was hearing. Um, the verse itself feels very Western musical theater, pulling from some classical there, too. Um, a bit more on the uh, Romantic period, though. It's, uh, I'd even say that generally. And I could be way off here because I'm kind of extrapolating a bit. So let me know what your opinion is on this. It's a very palatable song, though. The accordion is a timbre that I don't think everyone, uh, particularly in the Western world, would gravitate towards. But generally speaking, the chords that are being played, the vocal delivery, the vocal production, the melody on the vocals, all of this is generally palatable i don't think too many people would immediately turn this down it might not be exactly what they want it might be something that bounces off of them a little bit again i think primarily because of the accordion but generally speaking i think this is palatable there's a lot of elements uh, where i'm taking this in the vocal melody in general and production that feel informed by pop music um globally i mean i i would naturally say western pop music just because that's where i have the most influence or most experience with but even when i think about uh like korean and, and japanese pop music i think i mean this generally feels like that as well 
So it is a palatable sound. It is informed not by just uh, genres of the past, but one of the present too, at least. And that makes it really difficult to to pin down what it is, what it's doing. And it, uh, ultimately, it's what excites me. what makes me want to listen to more. I wanted to see what else was on the album, but it's just this song and one other. So I wonder if it's a single. Her latest release... Oh, from 2024 also. 12 songs, 46 minutes. I'm curious how much of it is like what we just listened to. Because I would 100% listen to a whole album of this. I, I find it very intriguing but also not it is experimental but it isn't difficult to listen to it isn't avant-garde in any way it isn't completely bucking convention it's actually just combining a lot of convention into a, a single idea um the 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 concepts just aren't usually mixed together too often at least not in what i've heard before and that makes it stand out quite a bit just on the harmonic level I gotta talk about that accordion though. I I'm not super keen on the tone. It's something I would have to get used to. It's not something I hate. I've heard music with accordion before. It's 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 an acquired taste though. And I'm halfway to acquiring it, I guess, would be a way to phrase that. But what the accordion is doing in, intrigues me. In the verses, which is pretty much what I would call the non-instrumental parts, we have a right panned. Uh, accordion that is just playing chords for the most part it's providing the foundation for everything a bit of a rhythmic pulse alongside the chord progression itself between it and the vocals we have very much a melody and accompanying parts very standard but the left panned accordion is what intrigues me the most this is where we get the solos in the instrumental part but it's also where we get the counterpoint in the verses. But what I find interesting is that there are very few situations where I feel like the counterpoint embellishes directly on what the lead vocal is doing. There are times when it almost feels like the accordion is off in their own world doing their own thing. There's nothing that I think interferes with the vocal melody in a way that detracts from it, but there's just very little overlap, I think, of um, them both achieving or, or striving to achieve a similar idea. <clears throat> the accordion also feels to be a bit more adventurous and exploratory with its sounds, playing notes outside of the chord and coloring outside the lines quite a bit more often than the vocals ever do. It almost feels as if they're not in opposition with each other and they're not necessarily in two, you know, two totally different songs that just happen to be playing together, that kind of vibe. But they also feel independent of one another. I was trying to figure out what this might mean within the concept of, of finding a light through rebirth. I was hoping maybe the two would align at some point, but they seem to distance themselves more and more with each verse. With that third verse, I think the accordion doing the most unique stuff compared to what the vocals had been doing, which was for the most part repeating all three. Uh, all three verses are very similar in the vocal part. Now, I will concede, though, that this might just be my ear. There's a lot of interesting harmonic ideas within the accordion itself, and I might, I might not be... I, I just might not have the right understanding to grasp how these things are relating to the vocal melody. And so I did say that they don't relate, but I do want to walk that back a second. I don't see how they relate. I think that is a more accurate statement. Um, and again, I don't think it's it's a detriment. I don't think it, it worsens the song in any way. But usually when there's counterpoint, they're dancing around and within each other's lines in order to uh, you know, work their own ideas, but also embellish the larger concept. And I never really got the embellishing part. There's two melodies here. They don't interfere with each other, but they don't really support each other either in my understanding of it. And that's where it kind of stands out to me and, and makes me question some of the stuff going on there. But it does add an interesting 
vibe and an interesting spice to the verses. I think they would have been just fine as a melody and accompanying part. Nothing would have been uh, bad with that. It's uh, interesting that they decided to go for the counterpoint on it and to do it the way that they did. And I'm I'm interested to see how other people might interpret that or what kind of emotions they get out of listening to those two instruments play together. Because, like I said, I don't see them apart, but I don't really see them together either. It's It's an interesting idea. And I guess this brings us to the accordion solos the instrumental parts, these, th this whole, it, it, it's also kind of leans into the structure of the song, the phrasing of everything. We have accordion that brings us in. We have a bit of a solo instrumental bit. First verse, instrumental. Second verse, instrumental. Third verse. And a little bit. Yeah, we had, we had the uh, accordion take us out of the song too. But there's also these hard breaks. After a vocal line, before moving into the next in instrumental, there'll be a moment where nobody plays anything. We have a little bit of the decay, that natural reverberance from the two instruments still existing. It isn't pure silence, but no one plays anything for about two beats, maybe three. Yeah, I guess it is about three, isn't it? A full bar before... The, the uh, accordion brings us back in with the next instrumental. This whole idea of breaking up the song into instrumental and then vocal, instrumental and vocal, it's uh, it's an interesting way to go about doing it. I wonder if there is, uh, I wonder what the reasoning is behind it. Maybe it's a, a cultural thing. Maybe it's how, maybe, maybe it's them paying homage to some of the folk styles of uh, music and the way that the structures and those are have been done over the ages. Maybe it makes sense for the song. Maybe as we explore the lyrics, we might find that having these breaks indicates a passage of time between sections or something like that. I, I don't know. But as it stands right now, it's, it's just an interesting quality, characteristic of the song to have it broken up in, in sort of these chunks, these chapters. It feels too short to really say chapters. It's five and a half minutes long. But it is. And they create nice moments to sort of uh, take a breath and prepare for the next step. And oh, even, well, that kind of works within the concept of, of rebirth and finding light in dark times. It's finding a moment to just breathe and get through the day. Maybe. Well, like I said, we'll hit the lyrics, we'll see what's going on there. Um, but the accordion solos. This is also where the song is its most adventurous. I think in the verses, we find, like I said, vocal melody that seems to be retained from verse to verse. Not much difference there. And then the accompanying uh, rhythm slash harmony, chord progression. Very, very uh, palatable, very by the books kind of thing there. Some neat harmony going on, but otherwise... Nothing too exploratory. This this accordion over here is where all the exploration happens. And they narrow it down a bit in the verse to accompany the vocal melody. But when the vocals aren't there, this this accordion player goes wild. All sort, I mean, this is where the jazzy stuff comes in. This is where some of the expanded classical stuff comes in. The rhythms in here are wild. We introduce noisier components to the song, introducing lots of uh, dissonance harmonically. I think the best way I can read this is the chaos of darkness. Maybe. I don't know. It's, uh, like I said, it's tough. It's been tough for me to get a read emotionally on this song. It is dark overall, I think. The verses themselves are very rooted, very down to earth. Not a lot of energy to them, not a lot of forward momentum, and not very bright harmonically. Both of the instruments have a bit of warmth to them. I think they complement each other well on a timbre level, uh, but neither one of them are really bright. The vocals definitely being the brightest instrument here, but. Like I said, there's still a warm, resonant roundness to them that kind of bring things down, 
keeps things rooted and grounded and we lose sort of a, a brighter, lighter positivity through it. The song ends up feeling very heavy and weighty except for these exploratory moments, but they also introduce darkness and tension and, and grittiness too, so are they the moment where things lighten and possibilities expand, or is it a chaos where anything can happen, including tension? And, and grit and noise and ne you know negative parts of music. I don't know how to interpret it, but I, I love the, the back and forth here. The song doesn't really change. It's, uh, it doesn't really have a, a lot of contrast to the vibe. The volume, the emotion, the atmosphere, those don't really change too much throughout. It's pretty static. But having these moments of, uh, you know, more palatable, lower energy verses with more energetic, exploratory uh, solo sections, moving between that, that creates a nice ebb and flow. And again, we have those hard stops between these two. It creates the fluidity in the song that... Uh, I think ends up working really well. It allows it to not feel stagnant at all. That it gets always pushing forward despite really sitting within this one vibe. And a lot of that comes down to the fact that you never know where that accordion player is going in, in these solo sections. Um, and I really like that contrast there. The accordion player also brings in some really nice dynamics. We saw these in the first instrumental bit, but they're everywhere. Rises and falls in volume, rises and falls in harmonic complexity, in more palatable, brighter, lighter harmony versus darker, uh, more sorrowful melody. Uh, I said melody both times, but I meant harmony on those. Um... Also, general width of number of notes being played simultaneously. Uh, there was a part at the end that just really felt like this this ball of darkness was rising. It was very impressive to showcase that uh, and to get that feeling going with just one instrument. Although I guess technically two. I think these are two different recordings. The uh, foundational one and the lead one. But it's still just, it's one sound in the end. I'm going to take a moment here to read the lyrics, see what's going on there, see if we can't tie that back to anything about the song. And uh, we'll wrap this video up. Shout out to Rudy for finding uh, the lyrics for me. I would never have guessed to look on her Facebook page. That's just, I don't know, it's never a place I think to go. And it's not anywhere else. Uh, I went and double checked just in case, but yeah, thanks so much for uh, giving me that link so we could have this very short discussion here because there's not a lot of lyrics to this. My guess is that there's going to be a bit of repetition throughout the song, but it is not in English, so I actually, you know, there's no way I'm going to be able to tell unless somebody wants to, um, you know, listen to the song for me. And kind of tell me what was said in each of the verses. Because honestly, I'm looking at this, I'm like, there's no way this is three verses length, uh, three verses worth. But we have uh, light. There is no light. Talk to me. Tell me that here there will be stars. Sound. There is no sound. Maybe it's easy to stand up, but it's harder for me today. She also states in her Facebook post that this is a song about finding light through hardship, about rebirth, life, and uh, says that she wrote this song while being in a dark moment. She was in a dark moment for a very long time and didn't really know until now that she could actually see light, not just through the sky, but also through hearts, that there's lights everywhere. We just need to keep them on. I like that. It's uh it adds to to the song. It's it's extra, right? Because what the song states by itself is that this person ha is in a place with no light. They want there to be stars there. They want somebody to tell them their stars there, but they can't see them. They don't hear any sound either and physically 
They feel that it's difficult to stand up, much less take a step to get out of this funk, to get out of this darkness. And so it's interesting to see that description written from the future <laughs> after she had found a way out of this darkness um, and, has, and has found some light to kind of present that secondary layer to it. It is a song about being stuck in a dark time, but we also see that she came out of that and she gave uh, some extra information around the song. I think that's pretty cool. It adds a little bit to it. It isn't just a song about wallowing in depress depression. It's a song that says, this is where I was at. This song has no hope. Here's where I am now. I have changed between these two positions. You can too. And I like that. It's, uh, it adds an inspiring element to a song that on the surface is very melancholy, very dark, and no way out of it, no hope. Those are my thoughts on Lena Deeb's Da. Let me know what you thought of this song. If there's anything that stood out to you, anything that you would like to add on to what I said or correct me on, maybe you just have your own thoughts, opinions, and perspectives on this song. Put all that stuff down in the comment section. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. It takes you here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. All right, that wraps it up for this one. I'll be back tomorrow, though, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 p.m. UTC, as usual. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos.